Governor Romney, Congresswoman Bachman says she can start to turn the economy around in three months. How long would it take you? Well, I'm not going to give you an exact time frame, but I can tell you this, that if you spend your life in the private sector and you understand how jobs come and how they go, you understand that what President Obama has done is the exact opposite of what the economy needed to be done. Almost every action he took made it harder for entrepreneurs to build businesses, for banks to make loans, for businesses to hire and to build more capital. What needs to be done, there are really seven things that come to mind. One is to make sure our corporate tax rates are competitive with other nations. Number two is to make sure that our regulations and bureaucracy works not just for uh, uh, the, the bureaucrats in Washington, but for the businesses that are trying to grow. Number three is to have trade policies that work for us, not just for our opponents. Number four is to have an energy policy that gets us energy secure. Number five is to have the rule of law. Six great institutions that build human capital, because capitalism is also about people, not just capital and physical goods. And number seven is to have a government that doesn't spend more money than it takes in, and I'll do it. You, Governor Romney, you mentioned leadership on the economy. You are the front runner in this GOP field. Yet when it came to weighing in on the debt ceiling deal in Congress, something that had a major impact on the economy, many on this stage say you were missing in action. Some columnists even said you were in the Mittness Protection Program. <laughs> then just hours before the House voted, you released a statement saying you could not support the bill. Is that leadership? You know, this is a critical issue, which is how big is the government going to be? Back in the days of John F. Kennedy, the federal government took up, along with the state and local governments, 27% of the economy. Today, government consumes 37% of the economy. We're inches away from no longer having a free economy. And so this was a critical issue. And therefore, well before the debate got pushed along, I signed a pledge saying I would not raise the debt ceiling unless we had cut, cap, and balance. And that is the view I took on June 30th, and I reiterated that throughout the process, and frankly, all the way to the very end. Uh, so to be clear, and just to be clear here, you're, you echoed Congresswoman Bachman and Congressman Paul in being against that final compromise deal. So to phrase it another way, if you were president, you would have vetoed that bill? Look, I'm not going to eat Barack Obama's dog food. All right, what he served up was not what I would have done if I'd have been president of the United States. I know, if, but if that I'd bill have, was the deal been, on the table, if Governor. I, if I'd have been, well, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not president now, though I'd like to have been. If I were president, what I would have done is cut federal spending, capped federal spending as a percentage of the total economy, and then worked for a balanced budget amendment. If we do that, then we could rein back the scale of government, and that's the right thing to do. And that's what I said is that, uh, th in June 30th. Okay. We're going to go to uh, Governor Romney. You're campaigning as the man who can fix the economy. Let's look at your record, sir. As head of Bain Capital, you acquired American patent paper. Two U.S. plants were closed, and 385 jobs were cut. Later, you bought Dade International. Almost 2,000 workers were laid off or relocated. And when you were governor, Massachusetts ranked 47th of the 50 states in job growth. Question, you were going to be the jobs president? Absolutely, Chris. Let me, let me tell you how the real economy works. Uh, when I was at Bain Capital, we invested in about 100 different companies. Not all of them worked. I, I know there's some people in Washington that don't understand how the free economy works. They think if you invest in a business, it's always going to go well. And they don't always go well. But I'm very proud of the fact that I learned about how you can be successful in enterprise, why we lose jobs, how we gain jobs, and overall, in those hundred businesses we invested in, tens of thousands of jobs, net-net, were created. I understand how the economy works. Herman Cain and I are the two on the stage here who've actually worked in the real economy. If people want to send to Washington someone who spent their entire career in government, they can choose a lot of folks. But if they want to choose somebody who understands how the private sector works, they're going to have to choose one of us because we've been in it during our career. And by the way, as the governor of Massachusetts, when I came in, jobs were being lost month after month after month. We turned that around. We were able to add jobs, balance our budget, and get Massachusetts back on track. And by the way, our unemployment was below the federal level three of the four years I was in office. Thanks. Governor Romney, turning to you. In 2008, that you said you favored allowing American companies to hire more skilled foreign workers. With the unemployment rate now at 9.1%, do you still think that employers need to import more foreign labor? 
Well, of course not. We're not looking to bring people in and, uh, in jobs that can be done by Americans. But at the same time, we want to make sure that America is uh, a home and welcome to the best and brightest in the world. If someone comes here and gets a Ph.D. in, uh, in physics, uh, that's the person I'd like to stake well, a green card to their, uh, to their diploma, rather than saying to them to go home. Instead, we let people come across our border illegally or stay here and overstay their visa. They get to stay in the country. I want the best and brightest to be metered into the country based upon the needs of our employment sector and create jobs by bringing technology and innovation that comes from people around the world. Look, we, we are a nation of immigrants. We love legal immigration. But for legal immigration to work, we have to secure the border, and we also have to crack down on employers that hire people who are here illegally. I like legal immigration. I'd have the number of visas that we give to people that come here legally, determined in part by the needs of our employment community. But we have to secure our border and crack down on those that bring folks here and hire here illegally. Okay. Thank you, Brett. We're going to start with Governor Romney. Uh, governor, in 2005, when you were the governor of Massachusetts, you successfully appealed to Standard & Poor's to upgrade your state's credit rating. You said you used a combination of spending cuts and new revenues to put Massachusetts on a more sound financial footing. You even approvingly cited a tax increase passed by the Democratic state legislature. Question, doesn't this show that sometimes raising taxes is necessary? No, I don't believe in raising taxes. And, uh, and as governor, I cut taxes 19 times and didn't raise taxes. L let's step back and, uh, and talk about the first part of what you said. I was fortunate enough to be a governor that got an increase in the credit rating of my state. At the same time, we got a president who got a decrease in the credit rating of our nation. And that's because our president simply doesn't understand how to lead and how to grow an economy. I was very proud of the fact that Republicans and Democrats worked together in Massachusetts to cut spending. I came in, we had a huge deficit. I went to the legislature and I said, I want expanded powers to unilaterally be able to cut spending, not just slow the rate of growth, but to cut spending. And they gave it to me, and I did. We cut spending. Every single year I was governor, we balanced the budget. And by the end of my term, we had put in place over a $2 billion rainy day fund. That kind of leadership is what allowed us to get a credit upgrade from Standard & Poor's, and that's the kind of leadership we finally need to have in the White House. Question about health care, but I'd like to give you 30 seconds to respond to the criticism of other parts of your record. I think I like Tim's answer at the last debate better. <laughs> uh, there's some similarities between what we did in Massachusetts and what uh, President Obama did, but there's some big differences. And one is, I believe in the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution. And that says that powers not specifically granted to the federal government are reserved by the states and the people. We put together a plan that was right for Massachusetts. The president took the power of the people and the states away from them and put in place a one-size-fits-all plan. It's bad law, it's bad constitutional law, it's bad medicine. And if I'm the president of the United States, on my first day, I'll direct the secretary of HHS to grant a waiver from Obamacare to all 50 states. But, but Governor, and, and this, is, this is your one-minute question, do you think the government at any level has the right to make someone buy a good or service just because they are a U.S. resident. Where do you find that authority, that mandating authority, government making an individual buy a good or service in the Constitution? Chris, you're, you're asking me what do we think we should do about Obamacare, and the, no, answer, I'm, is, I'm asking you and the answer is uh, the answer is I think you have to repeal Obamacare, and I will, and I'll put in place a plan that allows states to craft their own programs to make those programs but, sir, work. I'm asking you and where do you find that authority me, in the Constitution? Let, let me tell you, uh, where do I find it in the Constitution? Are you familiar with the Massachusetts Constitution? I am. And the Massachusetts Constitution allows states, for instance, to say that our kids have to go to school. It has that power. The question is, is that a good idea or a bad idea? And I understand different people come to different conclusions. What we did in our state was this. We said, look, we're finding people that can afford insurance, health insurance, that are going to the hospital and getting the state to pay for them. Taxpayers are picking up hundreds of millions of dollars of costs from people who are free riders. We said, you know what, we're going to insist that those people who can afford to pay for themselves do so. We believe in personal responsibility. And if the people aren't willing to do that, then they're going to help the government pay for them. That was our conclusion. 
the right answer for every state is to determine what's right for those states and not to impose Obamacare on the nation. That's why I repeal it. Governor Romney, in June 2009, you argue, argued that America's willingness to fight wars of liberation, quote, nurtured democracy and human rights all over the world, was what made America, quote, the hope of the earth. Basically, a full embrace of George W. Bush's freedom agenda. Yet last debate about Afghanistan, you said this, quote, we've learned that our troops shouldn't go off and try to fight a war of independence for another nation. Those two statements are dramatically different. Have your views changed? No, I have the same view, and it's this, which is that we have helped the people of Afghanistan establish freedom from the Taliban. But now we're at a point where they're going to have to earn and keep that freedom themselves. This is not something we're going to do forever. We've been there for 10 years, and we've been training the Afghan troops. Sometime within the next two years, we're going to draw down our troop strength and reach a point where the Afghan military is able to preserve the sovereignty of their own nation from the tyranny of the Taliban. That has to happen. It's time for the, ta for the, for the troops of Afghanistan to take on that responsibility according to, as I said in that last debate, according to the timetable established and communicated by the generals in the field. And those generals recommended to President Obama that we should not, not start drawing our troops down until after the fighting season in 2012. He took a political decision to draw them down, down faster than that. That is wrong. We should follow the recommendation of the generals, and we should now look for the people of Afghanistan to pick up their fight and preserve that liberty that's been so dearly won. Now we're going to ask a few questions about gay marriage, uh, starting with Governor Romney. When the Massachusetts Supreme Court legalized gay marriage in 2003, you accused the justices of assuming for themselves the powers that should belong to the state legislature. Now that the New York state legislature has legalized gay marriage, do you believe state lawmakers have the right to make same-sex marriage legal in their states? I'd far prefer having the representatives of people make that decision than justices. But I believe the issue of marriage should be decided at the federal level. You might wonder, why is that? Why would you just let each state make their own decision? And the reason is because people move from state to state, of course, in a society like ours. They have children. As they go to different states, if one state recognizes a marriage and the other does not, what's the right of that child? What kind of divorce proceeding potential would there be in a state that didn't recognize the marriage in the first place? There are, marriage is a status. It's not an activity that goes on within the walls of a state. And as a result, our marriage status relationship should be constant across the country. I believe we should have a federal amendment of the Constitution that defines marriage as a relationship between a man and a woman. Because I believe the ideal place to raise a child is in a home with a mom and a dad. Turning to you, Governor Romney, you suggested replacing government jobless benefits with individual unemployment savings accounts. Jobless benefits for millions of Americans are about to expire in just a few months. If you were president right now, would you extend them? We've got a lot of people out of work. We've got a president that has an entirely failed economic policy and frankly doesn't know what to do to get this economy going again. Surely we're going to help those people who can't find other ways to care for themselves. But the most important thing we're talking about tonight is making sure that President Obama is replaced by someone who knows how to get this economy going again. That's what this debate is really about, and that's what the American people want to understand. Unemployment benefits, I think they've gone on a long, long, long time. We have to find ways to reduce our spending on a lot of the anti-poverty programs and unemployment programs. But I would far rather see a reform of our unemployment system to allow people to have a personal account which they're able to draw from as opposed to having endless unemployment benefits. So again, let's reform the system, make the system work better by giving people responsibility for their own employment opportunities and having that account rather than doling out year after year more money from an unemployment system. This is a quick fall, so would you sign a bill to extend unemployment insurance if you were president right now? If I were president right now, I would go to Congress with a new system for unemployment, which would have specific accounts from which people could withdraw their own funds, and I would not put in place a, a continuation of the current plan. This country is in an economic crisis. I think the people of this country understand that. And we have, unfortunately, as the leader of this country, a man who is out of his depth and who doesn't understand what it is needed to do to get this economy going again. He just doesn't understand how the economy works because he hasn't lived in the real economy. I think in order to create jobs, it's helpful to have had a job. And I fundamentally believe 
that what we need in this country is someone who's willing to go to work who believes in America, who believes in free enterprise, who believes in capitalism, who believes in opportunity and freedom. I am that person. I love this country, and I will do everything in my power to strengthen our economy and keep America the hope of the earth. Thank you. I'd love your help.